Hello guys, this is going to be a commentary um, showcasing the Retro Lancer in action. Um, this is not as bad as the last commentary where the Retro Lancer was completely analyzed and it was just hard evidence showing how overpowered this rifle is. This is more of you know a mixed gameplay where I'm actually using the Nasher shotgun as well. Um, my favorite starting weapon is the Nasher shotgun and in my opinion I feel that the Nasher shotgun requires the most amount of skill to use out of all the other rifles closely being followed by the snub pistol. Um, I would say it's a tie between the snub pistol and the hammer burst because it me to me um, semi-automatic rifles or weapons in general take more skill than automatic weapons because an automatic weapon as its name is it's automatic the gun is doing most of the work and firing at its set fire rate for you while the semi-automatic can either fire as fast as you can pull the trigger which requires effort from the user or it can fire as fast as the firing mechanism of the gun allows it to do so I heard people say that the Nasher the Nasher shotgun is overpowered um, there in some instances I'd agree with them in some in some instances where if you get an active reload with the Nasher shotgun it increases its one shot gib range so they don't have to necessarily be point blank to one shot you just like you see right there but if, if I had actives I could one shot him uh, like I think two three feet further back than what I was at um and then the reason why I'd say that 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 actually doesn't really mean that it's overpowered is because the national shotgun actually requires accuracy um all the other guns really you have more room forever for poor accuracy the national shotgun is the most punishing starting weapon for poor accuracy because it has the most delay between each shot um the snub pistol and the hammer bursts come behind it because of its semi-automatic nature the snub pistol can fire and the, and the hammer burst can fire at a very fast rate for being semi-auto so they allow um, more room for aim and error as opposed to the Nasher shotgun as where it literally has like uh, about 0.8 of a second of a delay time before you can shoot again so that little delay time could mean the difference between you dying or surviving if someone else is using a Nasher shotgun or if someone else is using a different weapon. As you can see just a while ago, that Retro Lancer, um, how fast it can down someone from that range. Like I still can't get over the fact that this weapon is just so versatile. The Retro Lancer literally, like I've said before in the previous commentary, it, it, I still believe that it is the most versatile rifle in this game. For a rifle to be a close quarters rifle, it it, it completely dominates that um that field. It, in close quarter combat, the retro lancer is the king. The Nasher is really only the king against point blank combat. And I wouldn't even really say that it's the king in point blank because the sawed off, even though the Nasher can really the, the Nasher is really the better shotgun now. It, it gets really to the point where the sawed off is just useless. But the sawed off, I'd say, is more of a king in the point blank because it takes less aiming skill to get a kill with that weapon because of its wide pellet spread. But overall, I'd still rather the Nasher, and I'm glad what Epic did to the sawed off by nerfing it because that gun was just ridiculously getting out of hand. Now, <clears throat> the back to the retro answer. Now, like I said, it's. It rains havoc in the uh, in close range combat. It can literally just stop anyone trying to rush it. From if you're if if you're being fired at um, at around a 15 feet distance and you're trying to advance to the retro lancer user, it's over for you. Unless you can find near cover, it's most likely going to be over for you. The gun downs ridiculously fast. Now mid range distances where the lancer is supposed to be the um the best re weapon for that situation. The retro lancer can outgun a lancer if you know how to effectively tap and feather or burst fire the weapon. Long range, um, I don't know why Epic did this, but for a close range rifle, Epic made it where the retro lancer doesn't have damage fall off. The hammer burst was the before was the only rifle that didn't have damage fall off. Damage fall off, for those who don't know, is when the 
the bullets at very far range lose their damage. So it's going to take more bullets to down someone from across the map as opposed to them being closer towards you. The Retro Lancer takes the same amount of bullets to down from across the map as it does up close. So now, this weapon, this weapon, guys, it can literally keep up with the Hammer Burst from a distance. I mean, the Hammer Burst will still most likely beat the Retro Lancer if the guy who's using the Hammer Burst knows how to use it and has been using it for a while because of the Hammer Burst's accuracy, but it's more effective than the Lancer at long range. Um, for a gun like the Lancer to be medium range, a medium range rifle, usually the medium range, anything in the medium, is usually going to be the most versatile, um, supposed to be the most versatile on paper if it's in the medium. It should be able to handle the lows and the highs um, more effectively than a, a low oriented weapon, like which is the close range weapon of the Retro Lancer. The Retro Lancer is more versatile than the Lancer, and the Retro Lancer is a close quarters weapon, and I just don't understand that. So, yeah, I'm gonna have more commentaries on this and this such in this subject and more videos. So, thanks for watching this video, guys. Later.